So tell me who you are and where you're from. I am Matthew Blake Johnson and I am from North Carolina. And what are you playing in Camelot? I am Mordred in this production. And who is Mordred? Mordred is uh, Arthur's son, his bastard son, who has come to uh, ruin his life, basically. So you're the villain? Yeah, I get to play the bad guy this time. So tell me, how's it feel to play the villain? Oh, it's fun. The laugh is definitely the best part. <laughs> You have a great laugh. Thank you. I've been working on it for months. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a new adaption. Talk to me a little bit about the adaption and how you feel it works. I think this version of Camelot, I've done the, uh, the original script before, and I think this version gets rid of all the extra stuff, all the fluff, and you get to focus on the story that's really there between the lovers. And what do you think about the, the Learner and Low score with the Camelot? I mean, they're two of the best, you know, so I think they... I, I really miss Nimue's song in this book because I think it's so pretty, but, uh, but but the songs are just so timeless and it really shows with, with this version where, where we've, we've found a way to make this show contemporary in a way um, while still being a golden age show. So. What's your favorite moment in the show? Lusty Month of May. Why? Because it's so like, quintessential music theater. It's singing, it's dancing, it's happy, it's fun. The audience should be smiling with us. Uh, it's, it's heightened. I just, I think it's a blast. Okay, tell me who you are and where you're from. I'm Meg Sharp, and I'm from LaGrange, Georgia. And um, this is a new adaption of Camelot. Talk to me a little bit about what appeals to you about this new version. I would say it's, it's a stripped down version, but I think it keeps all of the things that make Camelot special. So it's still got the amazing score and the amazing story, but it's told in a way where a bunch of storytellers come together and they talk about how they've passed down the story of Camelot. Um, so it's, it's much more accessible, um, but it still keeps the things that make Camelot so beautiful. So talk to me a little bit about finding Guinevere. She is a modern woman. Uh, definitely out of place for the time period that the story is told in. And I think it's just cool to see how Guinevere, even though the men are at the forefront of the story often, that she, what she does behind the scenes, really drives the story and holds a lot of the heart of the story. And so she gets to be a full woman. She gets to like experience romance, she gets to be strong and powerful, she gets to make mistakes, so she gets to be a full person. And I, I don't know if you often get to see that um, fully in a story, but yeah, it's really cool. Guinevere has never been in a fight scene It's before. super fun. Talk to me a little bit about that. Uh, the fight scene is good for me because I think Guinevere always thinks that she would be a really great fighter. Like, she has a great imagination. So I think she has all these, like, grand ideas. Um, but then when it actually comes down to it, she's never done it before, but she's always up for the fight. So I think the scene's really fun because she realizes her own strength a little bit in the moment that she wasn't sure that she had. Um, so the fight scene's really fun. As Guinevere, what, what are the parts of Lancelot you love and what are the parts of Arthur that you love? I think that the interesting thing about this triangle is that she, that Guinevere loves both men, but for different reasons. And I think she always will love both men and um, just for different reasons. Like Arthur is, she respects him and loves him. But at the time, women got married so young and you know she was shipped off to get married to someone that um, her father chose for her. So she never got to experience um, sort of dating and getting to know someone else. And so I think when that comes along, the idea of that is so romantic, but then you know the actual implications that come with that start to unravel, um, and her things that happen in her imagination become very real for her. And so you get to see her navigate all of that, which is just a very real thing, a very complicated issue to be in a musical, but I think it's done really beautifully. I really like Take Me to the Fair, uh, and I think again it shows how Guinevere even in a world of men, she kind of has a way of getting them to do what she thinks is best. Um, I wouldn't call it manipulative, I just think she's a smart girl. So it's just such a fun number. And that and Lust of Month of May, it's just such great ensemble pieces. And I think, I don't know, I think the energy can be felt. 
in the audience. Great, thank you. Thank you.